on top of the water tower. In the sky, 10 meters away, a guy is looking down at me. Deep ultramarine that melts into the night. His grin is wild, and a bestial smell carries on the wind. The stare of the beast is a cool one. The man in blue looks at me like an old friend, even in this situation. Casual, but his voice is filled with murderous intent. This guy can see Archer. A servant. A servant can sense another servant. My spine freezes. A normal light tone of voice, and it's colder than anything I've ever heard, scary enough to make me vomit. I can't tell how I should move or what my best course is. But my reason is telling me absolutely not to fight this man right here. Oh, the man raises his arm. It happens in an instant. The arm that held nothing until now. Big stick. Now holds a red weapon, two meters long. I jump to the side without thinking. I can't spare the time to consider that I can't jump full force while on the rooftop. I just jump with full force to the side as if trying to smash the fence. A whirlwind bra brushes past my hair. Barely made it. He rushed me in an eye blink and mercilessly slashed at the space I just occupied. The blue war wind pursues me. There are no escapes. The fence is behind me. To my sides. No, I won't make it. My response is fast. I run the magic crest on my left arm and assemble the magic in a single measure. It lightens my body and adjusts its gravity. In this instant, my body becomes light as a feather and I leap. I jump over the fence and fall from the rooftop. A super jump, but it's off the roof. The wind and pressure push against my body. 15 meters to the ground, 1.7 seconds until landing. No, that's too slow. He'll catch up. I let Archer take the impact of the landing and start to run as soon as my feet touch the ground. First, I have to change the location. We have to go somewhere where we can move around freely, not a small place like a rooftop. We have to move to a large field with no obstacles to play to archers and my strengths. I guess this is our first battle. I run from the rooftop to the screw ground in less than 7 seconds. It's more than 100 meters. My speed is so fast that normal people would see only a blur. But that's... Even with Rin's magic, she's not as fast as a servant. Or at least this servant, anyway. Meaningless against a servant. At the moment I step back, Archer steps in front, taking form. A cloudy night. 
In Archer's hand is a short sword that reflects the weak moonlight. I thought you didn't have a sword, Archer. I said that before. Hey. The man crooks his mouth. A large whirlwind. That's the weapon swung at me on the rooftop. The blood red crimson lance that tried to mercilessly slaughter me. Saber? Or maybe not. Well, there's no sign of his previous casual demeanor. In response to Lancer, full of murderous intent, Archer remains silent. The distance between the two is about 5 meters. The weapon in Lancer's hand is about 2 meters. That man of the bestial smell, I feel like the remaining 3 meters are meaningless. Archer doesn't respond to the sneering voice either. Confronting each other, strangely, are red and blue. The two counterfeit colored knights are already watching for the other's clinching blow. Archer does not respond. There is nothing to say to an enemy he must defeat. That steel back of his seems to declare so. That makes me realize. I'm being stupid. Archer is just waiting for my word. My command. I talk to his back without approaching him. Was that a laugh? He grins as if to answer my words, and the red knight dashes forward. Twirling gusts of wind. Short sword in hand, the red bullet launches. What meets him is a blue spear thrust. If the dashing archer is a raging wind, the responding spearhead is a divine wind. Effects, wow! Uh, the sword is swung, a swing to deflect the thrust. Archer parries the thrust of the high speed lance with his short sword. The one in red stops. The enemy did not permit Archer's rush. The enemy doesn't even let him get within two meters, the range of the spear. For a long weapon, distance is always preferred. As Lancer has a weapon almost two meters long, he only needs to attack when the enemy comes into his range. Thrusting. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Thrusting at an approaching enemy is easier than moving out yourself. But even so, Lancer closes the distance himself and doesn't even allow Archer to move forward. His temper is like a burning fire. Lancer closes in with each blow, no thought of stopping. The long weapon, it's suicidal to close in on to an enemy. The spearmen's tactic is to use their long range to defeat the enemy and win the battle. So as Lancer is just advancing unchecked, he doesn't have a chance of winning. But that's just by the book. Lancer's lance shows no vulnerabilities as it strikes or strikes for the throat, shoulders, forehead, and heart. Thrust so fast, even the after images are blurred. As each strike of his lance repels, rebuffs, and pushes back Archer, any one of his thrusts could be called a final blow. But even as a bowman, Archer is a servant. No ordinary attack can be a final blow.
Having repelled the lance aimed at his forehead, Archer closes in with a speed superior to Lancer's lance. Based on his shape, you might think that the main attack of the lance is a thrust, but the basic strength of a lance is in its swings. This is because of a wide swing using its long range does not allow the enemy to dodge it by stepping back. A partial retreat does not allow escape, and the attempt to counterattack will only result in a slashed stomach. But simply going forward will end up in a smashed rib from a long shaft of the lance. You know, la well, lances aren't the same as spears, because lances are meant to be used on horseback, and so I think you're using the wrong word here, but anyway, doesn't matter. Archer and Lancer are sim similarly built. It's hard for Archer with no heavy armor to step into range of a lance's swung like a whirlwind. But thrusts are a different story. A blazing, fast thrust certain to strike you is certainly scary. But as long as the attack targets a point, there are many ways to avoid it once you see it. As Archer did just, did just then, hitting the shaft of the approaching lance to redirect it slightly creates an opening. It must be because he underestimated the bowman. The advantage of a long weapon is in the length and freedom of his range. Once the lancer has discarded these advantages himself, his defeat is... The one in red stops. A nightmare like time is reversing. The thrust is faster than the previous ones. Archer tries to parry the blow, but he gets flicked away along with his weapon. There are no openings in Lancer's attack. No, not just that. The thrust increases in speed and power without limit and becomes a final blow even for a servant. We were the ones that underestimated him. But that servant, with Lancer's weapon, there are no general rules about Lancer's. Do they ever parry continuous attacks without even space to breathe between them? Archer manages to retreat a bit and parries, and as a result, the distance between them opens a little. That distance. Lancer uses that distance as a runway to launch an even more powerful attack. The raging continuous attack is only a repetition of that, but the blows themselves are godlike. Ten blows already. No, it must actually be many times more than that. The heavy rain of Lance pours with yet more strength, trying to skewer Archer to death. It's not fast, but it's just skill. It thrusts like a waterfall with no change in speed. What can Archer do as he's now on the defensive? With such a short sword, he can only parry the Lance. He has no way to close, on Lan close in on Lancer, and he continues to retreat. A vacuum of steel unfolds. Support. I have to back Archer up, my but my throat won't respond. My magic has poor aim. Unless Archer gets away from Lancer, I'll hit him with my magic as well. Such an opening would only increase Lancer's advantage. And besides, frankly, I'm captivated. This is a battle between servants. This is the Holy Grail War itself, where we use heroic spirits, the highest rank of familiar, whom we would never otherwise obtain. Servants. Familiars of different classes that obey the Seven Masters. These are the highest ranked familiars, called heroic spirits, that the Holy Grail summons. So it's misleading to call them familiars. Originally, familiars were just beings that ran errands for the Magus. Imagine, perhaps, a cat in boots, or a cute white bird, or a black dog that doesn't obey its master, or something like that. Familiars that a mere Magus can summon are of that level. Familiars are just familiars. They are only mascots that run errands for their masters, so they cannot be beings stronger than their masters, but servants are different. 
they are the most powerful beings. Even for sorcerers, of which there are only five in this world, it would probably be impossible to form a contract with them. Hmm. Well, it's ironic that they're called servants. We would assume that they would be submissive towards their masters, but they end up being more powerful than their masters, I guess. It's not that the summoning is hard, even that the ability of, a, of the servant surpasses that of the magus. Servants themselves are beings above magic. I'll make it clear, okay? This is gonna give an explanation during the battle, that's fine. That's, that's fine, like, that's, this is exactly what I'm looking for, actually. Servants are heroes from the past. Myth, legend, fable, history. Fiction or not, the superhuman beings who gain concrete existence in folklore are what we call heroes. A hero that becomes eternal in people's minds is no longer human after their death and is promoted to another form of existence. Humans who bring about miracles, save people, and achieve great deeds are called heroes even after their, their death. After being so called, they are promoted to heroic spirits after their death and become guardians of humanity. It doesn't matter whether these people existed in reality or only in stories. Hmm. It is, it is people's minds that create a hero. People's wishes that this is how things should be give them form and set them up as real. Authenticity does not matter. They can have form as long as they have fame as a legend and people have faith. The ultimate ideal humans have created, the greatest human people have created. These are the heroes, the heroic spirits. And of course, since they are beyond human, they cannot be controlled by humans. A magus usually borrows their power only to mimic them. They can't summon the heroic spirits themselves. But the Holy Grail made that impossibility into reality. It summons the heroic spirit beyond human control and turns it into a familiar obedient to the master. That nonsense is proof that the Holy Grail is almighty. Hmm. So I guess we have these Holy Grail wars just from the fact that it can do such a miracle. And with the passing of years ignored, the heroic spirits are summoned, the most recent from a hundred years ago, the oldest from the ancient days. The seven heroic spirits obey each of the seven masters, protect them, and eliminate the masters of the enemy. Heroes from every age and country are revived into the present day to kill one another for supremacy. That is why this ritual is called the Holy Grail War. But it seems, the Holy Grail has its limits too. Even the Holy Grail cannot indiscriminately call onto the spirit-like beings. Just as a form invented by humans is required for the imaginary sixth element, known as the devil, to take form, the horror spirits also need a form to live in this world. That form is their temporary name, the way they exist in this world. The Holy Grail War, or the Holy Grail itself, has furnished classes so that the heroic spirits may take form much more easily, and only summons the heroic spirits that match these classes. It's like a passport to the present, as it sets up a role as a familiar in advance. By allowing the summoned heroic spirits to take on that role, helps the spirit to take form. I guess so. I guess... I guess these categories are made for these heroic spirits by the Holy Grail itself. If there are seven masters chosen by the Holy Grail, there are also seven servants obeying those masters. There are seven furnished classes. Knight of the Sword, Saber. The Knight of the Lance, Lancer. Knight of the Bow, Archer. You know, 
I don't know why, but these cards, these classes, kind of remind me of Final Fantasy, especially Final Fantasy Tactics. Hmm. I wonder if there'll ever be a uh, like a strategy RPG for the like the Fate series and stuff. I wonder if it already exists. I don't think it does. Anyway, mounted soldier, rider, Magus, caster. Like a mage itself becoming a uh, hero, I guess. Silent Killer, Assassin. Mad Warrior, Berserker. And that's all seven. Only the heroic spirits with attributes of these classes are summoned to the present to obey the master and become a servant. That is a servant system, a summoning and contract of a heroic spirit beyond human control who win the miracle beyond human grasp. And I guess only one servant class, each master, this is how it works. I wonder why that is. Can't you have like, oh, I don't know, seven sabers all at once? Can't do that? I don't know. The ultimate competition held only on this ground, the one and the only Holy Grail War. A loud crash. The short sword, the, the, the short sword that deflected Lancer's lance flies from Archer's hand. This is the Lancer's technique. A straight thrust that turns into a sweep at Archer's wrist. It was a blow Archer could not avoid even had he seen it coming. There's no effective way of pairing a lance with a sword. A strong rebuff only results in a stronger counterattack. The weak rebuff does not create any openings. The important aspects of the battle between a sword and a lance lies in defeating the enemy when he's at the wrong range. Manuki. I mean, I guess that's fundamentally. Fundamentally, that is true. A spear is definitely, definitely has an advantage on most weapons that are shorter than it, at least when, you know, they're at that distance. There's no hesitation in Lancer. His movement is, or his movement to push Archer back stops. He must intend to end the match in a single instant. The stairs of the firmly placed Lancer and the swordless Archer clash. In that instant, the lance is thrust just like a flash of light. It can't even be seen. Forehead, neck, and heart. Three shots are launched, any one a fatal blow. But the flash too fast to see is repelled by a shining blade. In Archer's hand is the short sword again. A sword like before, a Chinese sword like a hatchet. But the biggest difference is... Two swords! He's only, I guess he was only using one last time, at least initially. A pair of swords. In his hands are matched swords, mirror images of each other. <laughs> Yeah, where's this, where's this bow? All we've seen is swords. Lancer's lance f flies. Wow. As if to finish Archer off, the lance moves faster and faster. A thousand strikes, pew pew pew. Clashing sounds are like a well-orchestrated music. The two steels clang against each other. The sparking clashes increase in rhythm without pause. The battle of the two is like a vacuum. It sucks in the air around them, and it seems like anything approaching them will be cut to pieces. In reality, it only lasts an instant. For me, looking on, it seems to take an infinitely long time 
or at least whenever I advance the text and finally they stop. Lancer tries to not let Archer near him while Archer advances using his swords as a shield. Over a hundred blows have been thrown and Archer loses a sword every time. But only for a moment as Archer has a sword in his hand the next instant, forcing Lancer back a little each time. I guess he's summoning swords summoning swords every time he's his gets destroyed. How many swords does he have? Lancer finally admits his carelessness. But even though he doesn't know who he who is before him, he will be the loser if he dismisses him as a mere bowman. The distance widens. Probably to recover, Lancer puts a larger distance between them. His speed is extraordinary. Archer's charge was out of this world, but it was still slow compared to Lancer. The movement of his retreat had panther-like speed and agility. Twenty-seven times. I guess he has 27 swords, at least. Lancer mutters in irritation. No, it's more like confusion. I feel the same way. According to Father, a servant carries only one weapon. Their weapon is filled with magical energy, so it's not something that can be created one after another, like Archer was just doing. Servants are heroes that slow sublimate their spirits after death, equaling the holy spirits. To put it another way, they are like devils or angels. They are powerful familiars on their own, but their most powerful weapon is their proof of heroism, a magical item called their noble phantasm. A noble phantasm is a weapon or armor the servant used when they were a hero, and it's treated as a last resort. Hmm. So I guess yeah, would they they dropped this term before? Doesn't really they didn't really explain it. I guess they're explaining it right now. The noble phantasm is the one and only weapon for a servant. I guess tied to their legend as a hero. This is because the noble phantasm is an ultimate weapon without equal. The lance that Lancer is using will show its power as a noble phantasm when Lancer deems it necessary. A noble phantasm is an impressive weapon by itself, but its true ability is to release all its power using its true name. Heroes' weapons, which rule over all others, and which, and which have killed dragons and gods. Servants activate their noble phantasms using their magical energy. It's much like magic. Servants recreate the destructions and legends using their noble phantasm as a catalyst. They're never disposable. The swords that Archer brought out must be excellent, but they cannot be his noble phantasm. He is a servant Archer, so the noble phantasm he conceals must be a bow. Lancer's irritation is understandable. Even though Lancer fought as a spearman, Archer fended him off as a swordsman. Which means Archer hasn't shown any of his abilities yet. So it's natural for Lancer to feel ghastly. At that instant, his vast murderous intent makes me forget to breathe. Lancer's arm moves. This is different from before, a stance free from contempt. The spearhead is lowered as if to strike the ground, 
own and only his stare pierces Archer. He's activating his, uh, I assume, noble phantasm already. Lancer's body sinks down. At the same time, a chill like thorns fills the schoolyard. The air freezes. Not a metaphor, it literally freezes. All the mana in the air is frozen. The only person allowed to breathe here is the warrior called Lancer. The lance in his hands is unmistakably a demonic one. And now, it is waiting to take its true form in the moment it strikes. Oh crap. He'll be beaten. I don't know what kind of noble phantasm that is, but Archer will be beaten. It's implausible, since this is the first time I've felt such an intuition, but there's no doubt about it. Archer will die when that lance is thrust. It is determined. Literally, Lancer's lance is the embodiment of the inescapable death. Archer will be defeated. Archer will die when Lancer pierces his heart. And yet, even though I know what's going to happen, I can't even help him. Because if, if I move even a finger, that would trigger the attack. So if anything can stop this battle and stop Archer's defeat, it will be... It will be the chance appearance of a stranger we have all overlooked. The ghastly air coming from Lancer disappears. The sound of fleeing footsteps. That figure is definitely wearing a school uniform. I guess someone was watching. Archer says calmly, Well, we were certainly saved, but... ランさん For an instant, my thoughts stop. Archer goes after Lancer immediately. I curse my carelessness. It's the rule of Magi to eliminate any witnesses. Which is why, if one didn't want to do that, one just had to allow no witnesses. I've done that until now. Why do I have to make a mistake today of all days? A night, or even the moonlight, is obscured. A student is lying on the cold hallway floor, and Archer is standing still. He is staring silently at the student. A smell hits my nose. The blood on the floor makes clear that it's the smell of death. Archer goes after Lancer. I'm left alone with the student lying on the floor. I guess he got eliminated. I can't look straight at him. But I must. This is my fault. This is my fault. This is my fault. Ever since I was a child, ever since I became the successor of Tosaka, I have been preparing for something like this. There's no good or evil for Magi. I've always told myself that this road is only my blood and the blood of others, so... I don't know how long it's been since Lancer killed him. Was he lucky or unlucky to be pierced through the heart? 
I guess Lancer's attack isn't a simple external wound as the flow of blood from the rupture isn't too severe. It's not too severe, but it's all over when the brain doesn't get any more blood. Now, basically, if his heart were pierced, he should have died instantly. Yes, he's still breathing faintly as if to give his last scream. But that will only last a few more seconds. He can't heal his own wounds. I don't have enough power to save him either. I try to touch the head. Facing the ground, it realized my fingertips won't move. They're trembling. I wonder why. I'm used to such things. I've had to make these kinds of choices many times before. I lost many things due to my mistakes and my selfishness. That's why I'm ready for a day like this. So why? Why am I so angry at myself? I control my trembling fingers and my failing knees of my will and look at the face of the student. A huge smacking sound. It really feels like I've been hit on the head with a hammer. I grit my teeth. Not to suppress my trembling. I'm really pissed off. Why is it him? Why did it have to be him? I'm not mad at Lance for killing a witness quickly and perfectly, just as a servant should do. I'm just angry at him for staying late at this place on this day. Sakura's face flashes in my mind. She will definitely cry. I recall one red tinted day after school a long time ago. A distant sunset. Someone always running alone. And a boring girl staring at that from far away. And before me, the corpse of someone who happened to get involved. There is a way. I might fail and lose my last resort in the process, but there is still a way. No, I'll lose my last resort whether I succeed or fail, but the result for me won't change. It's a mistake. The fact of his death is already determined. It's my fault for not noticing the things around me. It's his fault for unluckily staying late. So I don't need to go that far. Yes, because this is what my father who gave me nothing else left just for me, or gave me nothing else left just for me. A powerful chunk of magical energy, a reliable last resort to win through this battle. A precious, precious thing just for me. I shake the feeling off and kneel in front of the one who will become a corpse in another second. The pendant in my hand becomes lighter. My father's memento is drained almost to emptiness and falls into what used to be a dying body. I guess she saved him. Yes, it can't be helped. I didn't have the power or skills to revive someone with a damaged heart, damaged blood vessels, and the verge of brain death on top of that. That's why I had to make up for my lack of skill with this powerful object. But since he was still alive, I just did what I could and ended up saving his life. I'm just bluffing. Yeah, there's no need for me to stay here any longer. Archer should be following Lancer, so I should go home by myself.
Hmm. Why did Rin save that person? I think she was like, she was ready to just let him die before she saw his face. But I guess she knew him. So that's why. But that's why he saved his life. At great cost to hers. At least to her artifact anyway. That could have won her the uh, Holy Grail War. Hmm. On my way back, I remember. I left the pendant at school. Just the pendant now. That the magical energy has been drained out of it. I have no more use for that pendant. Sure, it might have had a bit of magical energy left in it. But surely less than the 10 jewels I have. What my father intended to leave for me was enough magical energy to win the Holy Grail War. So now, without magical energy, that thing is meaningless. I enter the house without saying anything and sit on the sofa. Archer isn't back yet. I sigh and listen to the clock for a few more minutes. I jump up and brew some tea. There's so many things to think about. Most importantly, the servants. I have just witnessed a battle between servants I previously only understood intellectually. The easiest way to beat an enemy servant is to learn their identity. Ignoring for the moment the idiot who doesn't even know his own identity, the biggest weak point of a servant is their true name. Discovering the servant's true name, in other words, figuring out their identity, should let you take a guess at what kind of noble phantasm they might have. It goes without saying, but since servants are heroic spirits, they have a legend associated with them. If you figure out their legend, you should be able to find out most of their abilities. Servants are called by their class names because they want to hide their true names. Because the more famous a hero is, the more people know about their weapons and their weakness. A heroic spirit that becomes a servant never gives out their true identity. The only ones that know the servant's identities are the masters. There's even a tacit understanding that the masters hide their servant's identities while trying to discover the identities of the others. This is the fifth Holy Grail War. The qualities of the servants are determined by the ranks of the summoned heroic spirits. It goes without saying that the more famous heroes and the heroes with better weapons are stronger. But it's difficult to summon such heroic spirits. To summon a heroic spirit, one must have a connection with them such as a weapon they use during their lives. Even the magic association must feel such things. Hmm. Magic association? So generally, one will summon a heroic spirit that suits them, like I did. A servant's strength is determined by the rank of the heroic spirit. But it's not that simple, as even the most powerful heroic spirits may have a hard time depending on the class they are assigned to. That is because of the special abilities assigned to each class, the possibility of the weak defeating the strong. The seven classes each have different additional ability, and one even has a chance of defeating an opponent of higher rank depending on the ability's infinity. Take an example, an infamous hero has defeated a great hero four times in the past. As far as I know, the most powerful servant is Saber. Hmm. In all the previous w four wars, Saber has made it to the final fight. It is said that the three classes, Saber, Lancer, and Archer, have strong magic resistance. To put it simply, magic is pretty much useless against them. This is because they are fighters, who were fought through the Age of Mists when magics were used widely. Magics that Magi use now would probably dissipate just by touching them. Anyways, that's why these three classes are considered the basics the best. 
Okay, we're just learning more, 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 and more about certain details about the servants and whatnot. I guess Saber is always the strongest. That's a given, apparently. Another that's worthy of mention is the servant Berserker. The heroic spirit summoned into this class loses their sanity. Just as the name implies, they become a mad warrior puppet of their master. The benefit from this is a strengthening of their power, far exceeding the powers they had when alive. However, the more powerful a servant becomes, the greater the burden it imposes on the master. In the past, masters who summoned Berserker couldn't control their rampaging servants and destroyed themselves by running out of magical energy. No exceptions. Then why would you ever summon the Berserker? I guess, if you think you have enough magical energy maybe? The winners and losers of the Holy Grail War are largely determined by the abilities of the servant. Well, I expect there are ways to win it by the master's efforts, but it's basically a fight between the servants. And that is why a master should be very careful when summoning a servant. I silently consider the plans we should make from now on. The clock, fixed already, strikes eleven while I do so. An archer comes home. As I expected, Lancer was alone, and it seems his master isn't the type to show up for battles personally. So, ma, yes, there's no way everything will go as well as I might hope. So it can't be helped. Let's consider what happened tonight as a tuition fee for the lessons learned. Archer protested silently that we should do so. I see. I guess I look depressed. Hmm. だって、まだマスターの数が揃ってないでしょ。今夜のは山梨だったけど、海戦の合図があるまで戦わないわ。それが聖杯戦争のルールだって父さんは言ってたし。そうか。君の父親もマスターだったのか。Archer nods, understanding. Then Archer makes a troubled face and starts to ponder something. あんた。まあ、一つ聞き忘れていた。リン。君は幼い頃からマスターになるべく育てられ、それに従ってきたのだろう。つまり、初めからマスターになることを予想していたわけだ。当たり前じゃない。それはいきなりマスターに任命される
The master's wish after obtaining the Holy Grail isn't irrelevant to the servant. But it's strange. Father said that servants have wishes as well, but that is only their wish. I don't think Archer should be concerned because I don't have any wishes. <笑>世界なんて特に私のものじゃない。あのね、アーチャー。世界ってのはつまり自分を中心とした価値観でしょ。そんなものは生まれた時から私のものよ。そんな世界を支配しろって言うなら、私は特に世界を支配している。Yes, you do. If, the, if it's that by, by that definition, Rin. Archer looks at me with a troubled expression. I'm amazed. This guy really is hard headed. だって いずれ欲しいものができたら使えばいいだけでしょ。人間生きていれば欲しいものなんて限りないんだし。つまり君は、ええ、ただ勝つためにたたかうの、アーチャー。Simply to win. Archer's shoulders slump. Maybe he's disappointed in my opinions. But it seems he's finally relaxed. Ah, I find it hard to deal with that kind of comment. But I wish he'd stop saying such things. Ah, I look away because I'm embarrassed. I find it hard to deal with Archer because he speaks frankly like this even though he's so cynical. Oh well, I'm honestly happy that he trusts me. I trust Archer and he trusts me. I don't think this sense of solidarity is a bad thing. さて、ならば一息入れようか。7人目のマスターが現れるにせよ。それは今すぐというわけでも。と。ちょっと待て、リン。君。あの飾りはどうした飾りってペンダントのことはあ、あれなら忘れてきちゃった。もう何の力もないものだし、別に必要ないでしょ。それはそうだが。君がそう言うならいいが。ええ。父さんの形見だけど、別に思い出はあれだけってわけじゃない。よくはない。そこまで強くあることはないだろう。リン。So saying Archer takes out the pendant I left at school. Hmm. Guess he had it. As if he's embarrassed, Archer looks away as he hands me the pendant. So. I accept it. To be honest, I don't know if I should be embarrassed or cool about it. The pendant is as, as it was. 
as expected, there's no magical energy left in it. Empty of magical energy, it's just an expensive but ordinary jewel, and doesn't hold any power. But as Archer will put it, even if there's no power left in this pendant, it still has meaning as something my father specifically left for me. Then, maybe, I can just laugh off the fact that I helped that guy by sacrificing my trump card. Something clicks in my head. I wasn't thinking straight back then because of my regret, but think about it calmly, I missed something. He saw us, so it'll be dangerous unless we adjust his memory. Basically, Lancer prioritized eliminating the witness over his battle with us. Lancer's thinking probably matches his master's. So if such a master finds out that the guy they killed didn't die, what will he do? Oopsie doozy. I get up from my sofa. It's been three hours since then. I might not make it, but after all I did, I have to make it on time. I run through the night. Fortunately, I know where his house is. I guess, yeah, I guess she knew the person that got their heart pierced. No, I didn't look it up, but it just happens that an acquaintance of mine goes there a lot, though I've never been there myself. Archer has no interest in cooperating. He's against... He was against saving the guy when he was dying, and he's against me going to help him right now. It's midnight. Under the cloudy night sky, we reach the japanese styled house. There's no sight of anyone in this house on the edge of the residential district. There aren't many houses around it, and there's no one to come and help if something happens here. My breath is white. A wind starts to pick up. It must be quite strong as the clouds start to drift fast. The supposedly warm wind of Fuyuki sends chills down my spine, making me tremble. Even if Fuyuki City is considered warm, it's still cold on the hill. The air around here is frozen. I strain my ears in the cold atmosphere. In the frozen feeling, I feel a small sense of an enemy. I bite my lip. His presence is perceptible on the other side of this wall. Lancer is in the house already, is about to kill the same guy again. We just come home without a clue as to what happened. <laughs> just comes in and kills the guy again. That would be a waste of a pendant, wouldn't it? Or at least the magical energy in that pendant, anyway. Just as I'm about to command Archer to go in. A bright white light, like a fallen sun, comes from within the house. The presence is eclipsed by another presence. The wave of power of the servant Lancer is consumed by an even larger wave. The instantaneous explosion of ether gives the spiritual being a body summoned to overpower Lancer. I can only mutter, but it's true. To prove it, Lancer jumps over the wall and leaps away as if fleeing from this place. Archer answers calmly. I've lost my normal judgment. That's why I didn't even consider the obvious event that would follow. The wind blows strongly. Clouds cover the sky like an umbrella. The unlit suburbs or suburbs are enclosed by darkness. And the servant jumps over the wall, coming down like a demonic bird. Archer has reacted already, but I couldn't react. That was my mistake. The battle ended with that small opening, not lasting even a second. It might have been only a second for me, 
but for that servant, it was an opening that couldn't be ignored. A sword rushes for me. Archer pushes me aside, and the servant slashes him. It happens in an instant. Archer, who handled Lancer's fury of attacks beautifully, has been taken down with one blow. But I make it in time this time. Just as the enemy servant is about to cut off Archer's head with her blade, I forcibly remove him. A pain in my right hand. It must have been an excessive command, so a command spell has to disappear from my hand. Also, you should use another command spell already. Second one. Now there's only one remaining. But this is for the best. Rather than having Archer die, I would prefer to lose one or two command spells. And who is this servant with a sword? Given, giving no consideration to Archer's disappearance, the servant attacks me. I take from my pocket a topaz with a wind spell stored in it, then I launch all the magical energy it contains at her without processing it. Give me some gems. The thing, this thing which can blow away a house without a trace, is a bundle of wind spells that are stocked up over time. It's one of the 10 jewels I've been putting my magical energy into for 17 years without rest. I'm using all the magical energy stored in it, so even if I can't defeat her, it should at least slow her down a bit. No, well, not even that. It did nothing. The swirl of wind that instantly tears apart anything caught within it disappears like a magic trick in the instant it touches the servant. Well, we did learn that certain servants are resistant to magic. Such strong magic resistance. Mere magical energy from a magus cannot hurt the servant. So this is it. She can't be hurt by magic. I've lost the protection of Archer, but I can't stop this servant. I barely have managed to avoid one blow, but that's it. I look up at the night sky. In it is the figure of a cold-hearted death who is looking down at me as I lay miserably on the ground. Well, I guess we're dead. And this is the Grim Reaper. The wind blows. In between the dark clouds and the spiral sky, the moon shines. The falling moonlight and the beautiful face. This is a servant that drove off Lancer, defeated my archer in one strike, and annulled my magic with no trouble. The girl's voice is like a bell. Yes, this voice is like a nightmare right now. The point of the sword shines brilliantly. On the verge of death, I understand. With just one look without proof, this is the card I wanted. The one said to be the strongest of all servants, the hero of the sword. I look up at the moon, accepting my death. There's no time for me to flee or plead for my life. I will die here, in Tosaka Zarin's Holy Grail War will end on the third day. And there is only disgrace and regret, and I will probably vanish bearing a grudge against my enemy. But still, I don't feel anything. Something must really be wrong with me. Even though I'm going to be killed in an instant, I adore her again. Well, that's right. If you ask for regrets, that's it. But I guess it can't be helped. Because she's the most powerful servant. Because her figure is just so heartless, so infinitely valiant, and so beautiful.
Oh hey, there is like a main menu. That took long enough. Uh, there's no like save button or can't. Ah, uh, quit the game. No, that's not one quit game. So I guess that was it. That was the prologue. Yes, it was. And well, we're here at the main menu. Amazing. <laughs>